All right, next and the last uh, characteristic of waves, and one of my favorites uh, to do in the lab, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see it. But I think I've shown you in grade 10, I had some of these filters hanging around and you guys were playing with it. Uh, this is the concept of polarization, where we can polarize the oscillations of light, for example, and then we can create some interesting filtering effects. All right, so the goal of this part is to understand the principle of polarization. How, what does that mean when we polarize a, a wave? And then how to interpret diagrams of incident, reflected, and transmitted beams in terms of polarization. And then what we're going to try to do is create a problem together and solve it using Malice's Law. Okay, so and Malice's Law is all about predicting the intensity of light that comes out of a polarizing filter. So where have we seen polarization in the real world? Well, a lot of sunglasses, ski goggles, uh, probably swimming goggles, uh, have uh, a film on them, a polarization film. Your laptop screen that you're looking at right now uses polarization to either to minimize glare or to actually create the colors that you're seeing uh, and so what you can see here, the most common one is sunglasses that are polarized. And on one side, there's no polarization filter on that sunglass lens. And here's a polarization filter. And what it's not, it's not removing light, but what it's doing is removing glare. So when light reflects off of the surface, okay, we get that reflection in our eyes. It's hard to drive, okay? And a polarization lens would remove light that is being reflected and give you a clear image. Okay, and the whole goal of today's lesson is to try to figure out how that technology works. How can we polarize light or filter polarized light? Okay, and on the right hand side over here, you see a polarized lens. Now you can imagine that film over there. What it really is, is it's like a fence. Okay, it has little gaps that are going straight up and down. And it would only allow light to go through the transverse wave of light that is vertical. We'll be able to fit through those gaps and get through. If light is oscillating horizontally, it'll get blocked and can't get through. Okay, so when light oscillates only in one plane, okay, such as a vertical plane, we would call that a polarized light. It's polar, okay, it has polarity to it. Okay, so here's an example. Of, yeah, I'm sure at home you have some sunglasses you can play with. All right, uh, if you didn't return the 3D glasses, Go quickly grab those from the cinema because they use polarization as a way for you to see 3D. Uh, and you can test to see if the, the sunglasses are polarized or not. Okay, so if you took the lenses of sunglasses and you had them parallel to each other like this, you would see through it. But then if you cross them at a 90 degree angle, if the image becomes dark or black and now you can't even see what's written underneath, then you know that those lenses are polarized. If you take sunglasses that don't have polarization filters in it, you would still see things underneath it. So there's no polarization film inside it. And one way you can think about polarization filter is it's a film, like I said, like a picket fence. Okay, often that analogy is there. And if I was creating a wave, okay, like on a rope vertically, okay, that wave would be able to fit through the picket fence and it would be able to fit through the second picket fence because they're both aligned in the same plane. But if you flipped the bars on the second fence horizontally, that rope would no longer be able to oscillate through and it would get blocked, okay? So what's happened is the wave that I'm oscillating, even if I'm zigzagging in opposite directions, some of that energy would get through. But after it goes to the picket fence, the picket fence only allows the wave to oscillate vertically, okay? So if I drew a vertical direction, only let's call that north-south. Okay, so that wave can only be oscillating in that vertical direction, okay? And then when it hits that filter, it'll be blocked because now this would only allow the horizontal east-west uh, oscillation, okay? And none of that wave has that property, so it would be completely blocked. That's how polarization works, okay? So just as a reminder, electromagnetic waves have polarity to them, okay? Okay. You have this is an electromagnetic wave of light where you have an oscillating electric field and perpendicular to it you have an oscillating magnetic field. Now, if, in a light bulb or the sun, the sun is going to be creating light. Okay, so if I had a light bulb, okay, it's going to be creating light because the light bulb has oscillating charges that's going to create it, but it's not going to create it in just one plane. It wouldn't be just north and south. Okay. 
the light that would be created from the sun or a light bulb would be unpolarized. So unpolarized, okay, which means that the light is oscillating in all directions, okay, and that's what we see over here. So that electromagnetic field can be oscillating in all directions, 360 degrees, okay? So this is unpolarized light right over here, and that would be created by the bulb or the sun. And then that unpolarized light when it goes through a polarization filter, the picket fence, that light becomes polarized, okay? And often you would see in a text, they say it's plain polarized. It's, it's oscillating only in one plane, okay? Now, that light, if the second filter is in the same direction, will get through no problem, okay? Now, when you look through sunglasses like this, of course, the light gets darker, because you've filtered out a bunch of these different planes of oscillation. So I'd say about 50% of the light intensity is going to get through because you've eliminated so many different planes of oscillation when you're looking through a polarization filter. Next, if I am going to filter it through one axis and then I start turning, I start turning that second filter at an angle, well, now we've got a problem, okay? This plane is oscillating vertically and this is only going to let a component, a smaller component of that light go through, and that light would be os oscillating at the same angle that that filter is oscillating at. So the interesting thing is if I take two polarization filters and I start to rotate the second one, I start to dim the light that's getting through. <coughs> if it goes to 90 degrees, it's going to block out all the light completely. All right, and then I've created a filter, a complete filter. You can see over here, this is, I'd say, about 30 degrees, and if this is 90 degrees, all that light is blocked because it's now cross-polarized, as you can see in this diagram over here. So the light here, unpolarized, goes through the polarization filter, becomes vertically polarized, and then gets blocked by that filter. Okay, and that's how polarization works. So there's a formula that we can use to calculate the intensity of light that's going to come out of the second filter. Okay, and we're going to get to that in a second. Another way, another way of getting polarized light is when sunlight reflects off a surface, okay, the reflection at a particular angle is going to be horizontally pol polarized, okay? So that light over here that's reflected is horizontally polarized. So if you're driving in your car, all right, and the light that's reflecting off the hood of your car or off the road that light would be horizontally polarized. So in my sunglasses, to block that, if I want to block that light that's being reflected off the road or off the car, or if I'm skiing uh, or surfing, <laughs> I don't know if you can wear sunglasses when you're surfing, but if you're on water, water reflects light a lot, especially snow. So you want to wear polarization glasses. And if I want to block the light that's reflecting off of that snow, into my eyes, I want to make sure that I'm wearing polarized lenses that are vertically polarized. Okay, and then what's going to happen is that light that is plane polarized, horizontally plane polarized at, from that reflection, that light is going to be blocked and it won't get through. Okay, so then I can filter off that reflected light and not become blinded. Okay, so Getting back to it, how do we calculate the intensity of light coming out of cross-polarizing filters, okay? So on the left, you see a graph. And what this person did is he took, he took these two filters, okay? Right now, the angle between these two filters is zero degrees, okay? They are completely parallel, okay? But then as I start turning the second filter, I would say that that angle is about 30 degrees, all the way until it becomes 90 degrees, okay? That we're talking about the difference in the planes of polarization. So what this person did is he made a graph, and we would have done the same thing. We would, would have taken a light bulb or my laser, and we would have had a sensor behind the two polarizers. And as we started to rotate one, we would measure the intensity, and we would see that when it gets to 90 degrees, the intensity would become zero, and that's because it's cross-polarized, all right? And you get this interesting graph. Once I go beyond 90 to 180, then I get my maximum intensity again because the planes are now parallel to each other. So this looks a lot like a cosine curve, and it is. And Malice's law is just a really simple equation that allows us to predict the intensity of light dependent on the angle
That was cool. <laughs> All right. So here we have Malice's Law. And let's go through it. So the amplitude here, the amplitude that you would see for, for the waves coming through relates to the energy. Intensity is proportional to the square of the amplitude. Okay, now the amplitude of that light coming through is going to relate to cos theta, the angle between these two polarizers. Okay, and then A squared, the amplitude squared is equal to my intensity. All right, so then, <laughs> sorry, I can't get over that phone call while I'm recording, but I'm going to leave it anyway, just out of interest. Okay, and so if I want to find, if I want to map this cosine graph out, all right, relating to that amplitude, the intensity is the square of the amplitude. So this formula results where the intensity of light that comes out is equal to my original intensity of light coming in times cos squared theta. Theta would be the angle between the polarizers. So it's very, very simple. So for example, if the angle was 30 degrees, okay, I would just plug 30 degrees in over here and I would plug my original intensity of light over here and that would allow me to predict what the actual intensity of light coming out of the cross polarized filters are. Okay, and that's Malice's law and the simple equation that you'd have to use uh, to answer questions with Malice's law.